Hello students, welcome to Asha's IS Institute. In this video, we are going to discuss UPSC Prelims 2018 General Studies Paper 1. So on our website, in the resources section, we have uploaded the, the, the detailed question paper segregated topic-wise. So here you can download that file too. So this is the paper one topic-wise PDF file which you can download. Here is the detailed answer key, the analysis of the paper provided to. So let's start with it. If you look at it, out of 100 questions in general studies paper one, 51 questions were from our current affairs coverage and class notes. So you can see the news which is provided on a daily basis on our website too. You can go through them. And this is freely available, will be available on a daily basis again for the coming year as well. So out of 100 questions, another important analysis is that 41 questions were easy questions. Easy if you would have covered current affairs thoroughly, if you would have done your static current, static syllabus thoroughly, then you can easily solve 41 questions in this paper. 34 questions were such which could be easily done with intelligent guesswork. So that is guesswork, guesswork not for a fresher, guesswork by a person who has an aspirant who has put in effort, studied and has covered subjects and current affairs. So intelligent guesswork can have help you solve 34 questions. 25 questions were difficult questions. So there the risk factor was high and you can leave many of those questions as such too, to reduce your negative marking. So here the segregation you can see. So out of 50 questions, uh, out of 100 questions, 47 questions were from current affairs, the various subtopics which we have been covering over the year. So quality based current affairs, geography based, economy, environment, that segregation is provided here. So total 47 questions come from this section. From culture, there were seven questions. It's a static part, history, medieval, modern, even geography. A map based question had also come. So this is the segregation as such in brief. We, I will see the detail of this as such too. So here you can see. So in polity current affairs three questions. The first question is right to privacy is protected as an intrinsic part of right to life and personal liberty. So right to privacy has been in news. Nine judge constitutional bench of the Supreme Court had given its verdict on right to life and right to privacy as part of article 21 of the constitution right to life and personal liberty. So it's protected as an intrinsic part is already given in the question. The question says further, which of the following is the in the constitution of India correctly and appropriately imply the above statement. So of course it is article 21 and freedoms guaranteed under part 3 of the constitution. So of course with article 21 too there are two options but then 44th amendment of the constitution had nothing to do with our, this aspect. 44th amendment was by the Janta government after the 42nd amendment by Indira Gandhi government. So if you know your static polity too, you should know. Part 3 is the fundamental rights. So the, uh, option C is the right answer for this. So here you can see we have provided and this was the current affairs which we have covered in our daily analysis too. Then second question. So this was an easy question. Second question is also an easy question regarding money bill. So money bill has been in news because Aadhaar was passed as a money bill, Aadhaar Act was passed as a money bill. So, regarding money bill, which of the following statements is not correct? So, here again, this was directly a question from current affairs, the definition of money bill, which is provided in the constitution. So, you should know about those which have been given quite often in news as such too. We have seen images with clear definition of money bill also provided. So, that is on the basis on which this question has also been asked. So here again the option is C, the incorrect statement. The money bill is concerned with appropriation of monies out of contingency fund of India is not correct. It is out of consolidated fund of India. So this is the incorrect statement. So this was a very simple question. So here you can see the option, our correct answer is C and on our website too, I will give you a look of what we had covered. So here you can see this is the article which was which is being referred to. Supreme Court questions passage of Aadhaar Act as money bill. So here you can see when we discuss this, we have discussed it in detail about Aadhaar being passed as a money bill. So a definition of money bill under Article 110 of the Constitution is clearly provided here. These are the points under it. Appropriation of money out of consolidated fund of India is the provision. The bill should contain only provisions dealing with all or any of the matters regarding financial matters. So that was also one of the options if it contains only provisions. So this is of course correct. This is incorrect. 
appropriation of money out of contingency is incorrect. So if you know your static quality too, there are two funds specifically, majorly that is Consolidated Fund of India and Contingency Fund of India. Contingency fund is with executive. In contingent situations, in emergency situations, money can be appropriated out of it. So money bill is regarding consolidated fund. Then third question, again an easy question from current affairs, election of the president was in use. So how the election of the president, uh, how the voting takes place, the value of vote of MPs, MLAs, this had been detailed discussion was done on this too. You can see the third option, the answer is A. We had done a detailed discussion on this too. The electoral college of president was completely covered system of proportional representation with value of vote of MLA, value of vote of MP provided here. So of course here again, the first option is the value of vote of each MLA varies from state to state. So the value of vote of each MLA, yes, it does vary from state to state because it depends on, as you can see here, it depends on the population of that state. So divided by the number of elected members in the legislative assembly of that state. So that is there. And then second statement is the value of vote of MPs of the Lok Sabha is more than the value of vote of MPs of Rajya Sabha. Now this is incorrect because value of vote of MPs is taken together. So as you can see here, value of vote of MP, whether the MPs from Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha doesn't matter. It's actually total value of votes of all MPs is equal to total value of vote of all MLAs. So any MP either from Rajya Sabha or Lok Sabha has the same value of his vote. So that is the option here. Second option is incorrect. That's why the answer for first statement 3 is E. Question 3. The next section is geography. Current affairs geography based. One question was there which could be intelligently guessed. So the first statement is in India state governments do not have the power to auction non-coal mines. So this is an incorrect statement because auctioning of coal and non-coal mines comes keeps coming in news. So state governments do have the power to auction non-coal mines. So this was first statement is incorrect. Then second is Andhra Pradesh and Jharkhand do not have gold mines. So this is also incorrect. Andhra Pradesh does have gold mines. Then Rajasthan has iron, iron ore mines. So this again is correct. So what happens is the first two statements turn out to be incorrect and third statement is correct. So the option here, correct option is D. So this is like here also in current affairs regarding mining, we have discussed in news. So the first statement has been in news and second and third you can interpret. Because do not have gold mines means there have been no gold mines. But gold mines are present in southern India. So some idea regarding that, some intelligent information regarding that can help you, you know, answer this question. And Rajasthan does have iron ore mines. So little idea about it, geography helps you in solving this question. Then sec next is fifth question. Consider the following items. Cereal grains, hull, chicken eggs, chicken eggs cooked actually that's a mistake here. Fish processed and canned is option 3 and newspapers containing advertising material is option 4. So what happens here is the question is which of the above items is are exempted under GST. So under GST exemptions are there for food items but then food items which are packed packaged and labeled those are not like uh, no, exempted from gst so when we discuss gst this has been quite often in news but specifically of course you would not remember and recollect which of these items specifically are under gst or not so this will be an intelligent guesswork which you would do here getting knowing this information that processed and fish canned and processed would of course be under gst Chicken eggs cooked. So cooked chicken eggs, you can see chicken eggs can be served in restaurants. So if you are having chicken eggs cooked, it will not be exempted from GST. So this again intelligently been using your, the information which you have. You can say that 2 and 3 will not be exempted. Cereal grains hulled are the raw, material, raw cereal grains which have been hulled. So of course they are exempted. And newspapers containing advertising material. So newspapers are also not exempted. So the correct option here for option 5 is A, one only. So this you can see in news also we have discussed finance ministry clarifies definition of branded items for GST. So this is there. Then next is sixth one. Which one of the above best describes the term merchant discount rate sometimes seen in news? So merchant discount rate has also been in news as the terminology has discount in it. If you have been going through current affairs, you should know that this is not a discount. 
so the next three options out of these four are talking about incentive or you know paid back by banks to customers amount paid back by banks to consumed customers or incentive given by government as option d says so these are incorrect it's not an incentive it's actually charged to the merchant by a bank for accepting payments from his customers through the bank's debit card so we have discussed this too for sixth it is c quite often it has come in news merchant discount rate because of digital india campaign which was going on post demonetization so this is that then seventh question with reference to india's decision to levy an equalization tax of 6% on online advertising services offered by non resident entities which of the following statements is are correct it is introduced as a part of income tax act non resident entities that offer advertising services in india can claim a tax credit in their home country under the double taxation avoidance agreements so actually this equalization tax has also been in news as you can see here the link is provided when foreign ownership norms were being you know debated on so here the correct option here is d because it has not been introduced as part of income tax act because that is what non residents are nris nris do not come under the income tax act purview so that is how the definition is so of course if it is regarding non resident entities it will not be part of income tax act so having this information knowledge can help you guess the correct answer here even if you have not directly remembered this news item or this particular information so one is incorrect second is it offers a uh, non resident entities can claim a tax credit under double tax taxation avoidance agreements so here again this is a decision to levy the tax so this decision did not talk of this so here the correct option is d then next is capital adequacy ratio is the amount that banks have to maintain in the form of their own funds to offset any loss that banks incur if the account holder fails to repay dues so that is what capital adequacy ratio is and it is decided by each individual banks which is incorrect so the second statement is incorrect so here again we have been discussing about capital adequacy ratio in news quite often so here you can see with respect to non performing assets the basel norms you know determine capital adequacy ratio no, uh, no, percentage as such to and the government also rbi also decides as such so it's not decided by each individual bank so option 2 is incorrect the correct answer here is a so the ninth question first statement the fiscal responsibility and budget management review committee report has recommended a debt to gdp ratio of 60% for general combined government by 2023 comprising 40% for central government and 20% for state governments so frbm review committee and kissing panel had been in news so this is directly from current affairs it was actually an article a complete article by mr nk singh in newspapers in the hindu newspaper too it was in news so from that specifically it has been asked so here again you can see so the correct answer here is c the central government's domestic liabilities this has been reversed actually central government's domestic liability is 49% of gdp and state governments have a liability of 21% so this is the and of course as per the constitution if the state uh, it is mandatory for a state to take central government's consent for raising any loan if the former owes any outstanding liability to the latter so if central government has uh, money due from states then states have to take their consent the central government's consent so third is correct first is correct in second it is a the data the percentage here 49 21% which has been interchanged so of course that may become a little tricky but it was directly from current affairs then next is 10th question first statement the reserve bank of india manages and services government of india securities but not any state government securities so this is incorrect rbi is the bank to the government even for state governments it does provide services treasury bills are issued by the government of india and there are no treasury bills issued by state governments of course treasury it is the government of india which issues treasury bills the t bills and t bills offer offer are issued at a discount from the par value so if you know about t bills treasury bills you would know that the there is a discount at the par, on the stated value which is there offered are with treasury bills so this information general information regarding treasury bills can help you solve this question too so here the correct answer actually is one being incorrect two here is correct and three is correct so two and three only c is the correct answer So here again, we have been discussing regarding T bills as such too in current affairs. 
Then next is, with reference to the governance of public sector banking in India, consider the following statements. One, capital infusion into public sector banks by the government of India has steadily increased in the last decade. Yes, it is correct. They have been discussing regarding capital infusion by banks on in the banks by government. And second statement is to put the public sector banks in order, the merger of associate banks with the parent state bank of India has been effected. So this has also been done. This was in news in current affairs. So both these statements are correct. So 11th is C. We have been discussing this in news as such too. Then 12th one, which of the following links all ATMs in India? So the four options are given Indian Banks Association. So this is actually a banks association. It's not an official, no, it's not an official government body. So it will of course not link all ATMs. Second is National Security Depository Limited. Now, that is regarding securities. Now ATMs is not does not have anything to do with securities. Then third option is National Payment Corporation of India. And fourth is RBI. So National Payment Corporation of India has quite often been in news. We have been discussing regarding this post-demonetization and during the Digital India campaign going on as such the digital push. So National Payments Corporation of India has various services provided as such. So we, you should know about it. We have been discussing this in news. You can see it was covered in on 31st October 2017. The details provided here regarding NPCI. So it, the various products of NPCI include all these. The Rupee credit card as such included UPI etc. So National Financial Switch. This is the one which provides link for all ATMs. So the correct option here is C. So that is the correct answer. So when if, even if you don't have specific information, but an intelligent guess can also be made here and you will come to the right answer. Then next is, which of the following is our possible consequences of heavy sand mining in riverbeds? So here you can see the options given. Decrease salinity in the river. Of course, if there is heavy sand mining, then the salinity in the river will not decrease. It will rather increase. There will be pollution of groundwater, of course. The water table would lower, be lowered as such. That is also correct. So here the correct answer is B. So sand mining has also been in news and has been discussed. So though directly we would not have spoken of all this, but the pollution and the environmental hazards of sand mining have been discussed. So you can easily guess the, as such to the correct answer. The next is... How is the National Green Tribunal different from the Central Pollution Control Board? So here again, this has been directly been in news. NGT has quite often been discussed multiple times. We've discussed regarding this. It is under the NGT Act that it has been established. And Central Pollution Control Board has also been established under the Environmental Act. So here it is not through an executive order. So option one is incorrect. This too has been in news and we have been discussing regarding it. If you look at it, you can see. On in uh, keywords, we have given the details regarding Central Pollution Control Board. It's a statutory body under Ministry of Environment and the, established in 1974 under Water Prevention and Control Pollution Act. It has been established under an act. Later, the, it was also interested in functions regarding air pollution. So this is the body, Central Pollution Control Board. So here, one statement, the second part is incorrect. So one becomes incorrect. Second, the NGT provides environmental justice and helps reduce the burden of litigation in the higher courts. This is correct. Whereas CPCB promotes cleanliness of streams and wells and aims to improve the quality of air in India. That is also correct. So here the correct answer is B, 2 only. Then next is, consider the following statements. Most of the world's coral reefs are in tropical waters. Second, more than one third of the world's coral reefs are located in territories of Australia, Indonesia and Philippines. So, of course, coral reefs are in tropical waters majorly because in news it had been the, in news too that world's northernmost coral reef is in Japan. So, we have discussed regarding this too and regarding corals quite often. The Great Barrier Reef and the coral bleaching which is taking place, taking place over there has been quite often in news. So, of course, it's a huge coral reef up here. So down here actually. So these two statements are correct. Third is coral reefs host far more number of animal phyla than those hosted by tropical rainforests. So this is also a viewpoint which is quite often endorsed. Its corals are also called uh, tropical, similar to tropical rainforests in the water body. So the option here, correct option here is actually D. 1, 2 and 3. Then next is why is a plant called Prosopis juliflora often mentioned in news? 
So the four options given here is its extract is widely used in cosmetics. Now, again, uh, even if you don't remember and recollect, it has been in use, prosopis juliflora. But even if you don't specifically remember it, still an intelligent guesswork can be made here. So, you can see it's mentioned, often mentioned in use. Now, something which is used in cosmetics would not quite often come up in use. It's not so important. So, you know, so this is one. Then second, it tends to reduce the biodiversity in the area in which it grows. That is the second option. None of the above is the D option, of course. And C is its extract is used in synthesis of pesticides. So these are one of specific, uh, you know, uses which are being spoken of. And the second statement seems the most probable answer. So an intelligent guesswork can also help you in giving the correct answer here. You can try this. So it tends to reduce the biodiversity in the area in which it grows. B is the correct answer. And it has been in use. Then next is 3D printing has applications in which of the following? So here five options are given. So 3D printing has been quite often in, been in news and has been asked often even in mains by UPSC. So it's an old uh, you know, topic as such now too. So the first option given is preparation of confectionery items which can be done. Manufacture of bionic ears of course automotive industry can use 3D printing. Deconstructive surgeries are possible yes and even in data processing technologies is the last option given. So even if you feel 1, 2, 3, 4 are the correct options but then 5 is included in all. So the correct answer here is D. Then next is a very simple question again. The term wanna cry petty and eternal blue. This we have quite often discussed. So these are regarding cyber attacks. So here the correct option is C. Then regarding Digital India 2. From what is the aim of Digital India Plan of Government of India? So the three statements given are formation of India's own internet companies like China did. So, Digital India campaign, as we know, it's a push for digitization. So, this is one statement given. Second, it says, establish a policy framework to encourage overseas multinational corporations that collect big data to build their large data centers within our national geographic boundaries. So, we don't want foreign data coming here, big data being collected in India. That's not the idea of Digital India. Connect many of our villages to the internet and bring Wi-Fi to many of our schools, public places and major tourist centers. Of course, three is the correct answer. But then forming internet companies does not come under a digital India campaign. That is not the idea. So one is incorrect and even two is incorrect. Only three is the correct answer. So here B is the right answer. 19. Then next is, so this is a huge passage actually given regarding internet of things. And internet of things also we have quite often discussed in news that how it connects everything. So every aspect, you know, all your digital Equipments are connected. So how it works, you can see here the example given in this entire passage. So, of course, this is about Internet of Things and this was a very easy question. If you have been doing current affairs. So, we had also covered it up. Then next is, with reference to digital payments, consider the following statements. Bheem app allows the user to transfer money to anyone with a UPI enabled bank account. Yes, this is correct. While a chip pin debit card has four factors of authentication bheem app has only two factors of authentication so now again here the st second statement is speaking against bheem app and bheem app is an app of the government of india which it has been endorsing so it will not be there cannot be a statement which is criticizing this that this does not have enough factors for authentication authentication enough security so here the correct answer for 21 is a so though it has been in news but even an intelligent guesswork can help you in giving the correct answer. Next is the term sixth mass extinction is often mentioned in news in the context of, so this has directly been in news, sixth mass extinction. We had also discussed it on 12th July. So here the correct answer is D, over exploitation and misuse of natural resources. So it's regarding climate change. So this is the correct answer. Then next is, with reference to India's satellite launch vehicles, consider the following statements. So this again is an easy question. 
First statement is PSLV is launched the satellites useful for earth resource monitoring, which is correct. PSLV, GSLV, you should know the difference and this is standard information, very easy question which has been asked here. And GSLVs are designed to mainly to launch communication satellites. So one is correct. Satellites launched by PSLV appear to remain permanently fixed in the same position in the sky as viewed from a particular location on earth. This is actually the characteristic of GSLV satellites, satellites launched by GSLV. So, geostationary satellites. So, this statement, second statement is incorrect. It should not be PSLV, it should be GSLV. And third statement, GSLV Mark III is a four-staged launch vehicle with the first and third stages using solid rocket motors and second and fourth stages using liquid rocket engines. So, here again, you should know GSLV Mark III had been in news. We had also covered it, you can see. So, here the thing is that GSLV Mark III in its third stage has cryogenic engine. So, cryogenic is not in solid form. So, third statement becomes incorrect. So, here again the correct option is A. So, B is incorrect, C, 2 is incorrect, 3 is incorrect. So, only correct answer is 1 only. Okay. Then next is regarding IR and SS which we had discussed in detail as such too. So, this is again factual. So, if you, we had done a complete one page article on this and also specific dedicated video on IRNSS was made few days before the prelims exam to in, as such in May. So this of course is a very simple question very much in use but you should know specific information. First statement is in, is correct. Second statement is incorrect because it's not up to 5500 square kilometers. So here you should know we had covered this IRNSS Navi. So here it had been quite often covered in news. So, here you can see three geostationary and four geostationary orbit satellites are there, seven satellites in this constellation and it provides coverage of up to 1500 kilometer beyond India's border and here it talks of 5500 square kilometers. So, second statement is incorrect, three and four satellites information is correct and India will have its own satellite navigation system with full global coverage by middle of 2019 is incorrect. So, full global coverage is not what IRNSS is targeting. IRNSS is targeting coverage of India and the neighborhood. So, here the correct answer is A, one only. Two and three statements are incorrect. The next is, consider the following phenomena. Light is affected by gravity. The universe is constantly expanding. Matter warps its surrounding space-time. With which of the above is our predictions of Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity often discussed in India? So, light is affected by gravity with respect to gravitational waves too. This has quite often been in use. So, this is correct. Universe is constantly expanding. This is a general theory, the expanding universe theory which is accepted generally. So, of course, this is true, you should know. And matter warps its surrounding space-time. This had also been in use during the time when Stephen Hawking, Hawking expired. So, these three statements, all three statements are correct. So, if you have been doing current affairs, we will be able to have some knowledge and idea regarding these topics too. The next is, with reference to genetically modified mustard, GM mustard developed in India, consider the following statements. First statement is, GM mustard has a genes of soil bacterium that gives the plant the property of pest resistance to a wide variety of pests. So, actually GM mustard is to increase productivity. So, GM mustard, DM11, Dhara, this also has been quite often been in news. GM mustard has a genes that allows the plant cross-pollination and hybridization. This is correct. And GM mustard has been developed jointly by IARI and Punjab Agricultural University. So, if you have been doing this uh, in news quite often, you will know that it's not Punjab Agricultural University, it's Delhi University. Deepak Pentel of Delhi University who has developed this GM mustard which has been endorsed by the government too, funded by the government as such too. So, third statement is incorrect. So, here the correct option is third statement is there in A, C and D. So, only B remains, two only. So, 26 the correct answer is B. Then next is consider the following pairs, terms seen in news and the context. So, well to experiment as such. This has been in news. All three blockchain technologies regarding cryptocurrencies you should know. CRISPR CS9 is regarding biotechnology, the ge genetic editing. So, this is not regarding particle physics. So, this is incorrect as such too. So, these terms have also been in news. 
from directly from news they have been asked. so here the correct answer is only blockchain technology which has been correctly linked bell to experiment was regarding particle physics actually not artificial intelligence so all three have been in news and we have covered them in news as such too the next is consider the following statements as per the right to education act to be eligible for appointment as a teacher in a state a person would be required to possess the minimum qualifications laid down by the concerned state council of teacher education so minimum educational qualification is required but these minimum educational qualifications as such laid down by state council and the rt rt is for at the national level so here this aspect is incorrect as per rt act for teaching primary classes a candidate is required to pass a teacher eligibility test conducted according to national council of teacher education guidelines this is correct and in india more than 90% of teacher educational institutions are directly under the state government this is incorrect actually under private sector so here the correct answer is b and right to education and the amendment which has been proposed has been discussed in news quite often and regarding teachers qualification the relaxation been given has quite often been in news then this is the first difficult question which you may not be able to answer according to the analysis which i have done so this has two statements one is regarding food safety and standards act 2006 replacing prevention of food adulteration act of 1954 so being sure of this statement is quite difficult so fssai has quite often been in news so it's under the charge of director general of health services in the union ministry whether this is correct or incorrect again knowing this is difficult actually it's incorrect so a is one is correct two is incorrect so correct option here is a 29th answer but then again you may not be able to give the correct answer here it's categorized as difficult according to my analysis then next is with reference to the provisions made under national food security act of 2013 consider the following statements so first one is the families coming under category of bpl only are eligible to receive subsidized food grains if you know regarding national food security act it's not for bpl a huge population is covered under it the eldest woman in the household you know she shall be the head of the household for the purpose of ration card this is correct this has quite often been discussed debate you know as such third is pregnant women and lactating mothers are entitled to a take home ration of 1600 calories per day during pregnancy and for 6 months thereafter so this is incorrect there is a different provision as such so the correct answer here is only two so one is surely incorrect so if one is surely incorrect either b or d would be the answer so only two two is surely correct so then you come to option b so 30th the answer is b so national food security act also has been quite often been in news then next is with reference to pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana consider the following statements it is a flagship scheme of the ministry of labor and employment it among other things will also impart training in soft skills entrepreneurship financial and digital literacy so kaushal vikas yojana kaushal is skilling so it aims to align the competency competencies of unregulated workforce of the country to national skill qualification framework So out of these three statements, which are correct, so of course if we provide training in soft skills, it's skilling them. So of course this digital literacy, when it has been pushed by the government so much, two is correct. So two is surely correct. So you have option B, C, and D with two, and then for statement three two, it seems to be correct. But then it's not a flagship scheme under Ministry of Labour and Employment. You should know this that it, it has, there's a separate Ministry of Skill Development. so that's why it's a scheme under ministry of skill development so one statement is incorrect so when one is incorrect the correct answer here is c 2 and 3 then next is regarding aadhar a question on aadhar but it's a difficult question according to me because we have discussed quite often regarding aadhar but regarding this open application programming interface apis which are provided under aadhar so this is an open source provided so this is actually for developing the so software so software can be integrated in it can be used with any electronic device so that is true and online authentication is possible through this so here actually the correct answer is c both are correct 
then 33 is Aadhaar card can be used as a proof of citizenship or domicile. This has quite often been in news. Aadhaar card cannot be a proof for citizenship or domicile because we have seen many non-Indians have also acquired Aadhaar. So that has been clarified by the government quite often and has been in news. Second is once issued, Aadhaar number cannot be deactivated or omitted by the issuing authority. This is also incorrect. If a person dies, it can be deactivated. So both statements are incorrect. Here the correct answer is D. The next is consider the following areca nut, barley, coffee, finger millet, ground nut, sesamum, and turmeric. Question is the cabinet committee of economic affairs has announced the MSP minimum support price of which of the above. So now MSP has quite often been in news minimum support price, farmers are agitating. The, uh, the MS Swaminathan committee report has quite often been in news. So MSP has been in news, but this question is seems to be specific. No, factual question that which of these commodities have MSP announced for them. So, of course, you know MSP is announced for standard you know, crops as such. So, of course, here the one which you feel MSP would not be announced for is coffee because coffee is under plantations. So, 3 is not to be there and 3 is there not there only in option B. So, option B again nut should not be there. Barley, yes. Finger millet, yes. Groundnut, yes. And uh, and season again turmeric so you can see with an intelligent guess work too you can come to option b as the right answer here just guessing that coffee should not be there amongst all these communities so that is there 34 b then next is with reference to solar power production in india consider the following statements India is the third largest in the world in the manufacture of silicon wafers used in photovoltaic units. So again, here you should know actually we are importing photovoltaic cells as such. So when we are importing PVCs, how can we be the large, one of the largest manufacturers? So one statement is incorrect. And next is solar power tariffs are determined by Solar Energy Corporation of India Limited. And it has quite been often been in news that tariffs are becoming competitive. There is bidding done for solar power tariffs. So when there is bidding done, so prices are not determined. Tariffs are not determined. Their tariffs are through bidding. So here again, second statement is incorrect. This has quite often been in news. So that is why for option 35 to again, the correct answer is D. And this has been in news quite, quite often. And we have covered it. The next is consider the following pairs. Regions sometimes mentioned in news and country. Number one, Catalonia, Spain. So, Catalonia has quite often been in news. It's a region in Spain which is demanding independence. So, Catalonia is discussed. Then, Crimea is from Ukraine. So, this has been quite often been in news. So, it may be a little old current affairs too. So, Crimea, you should know it's nothing to do with Hungary. So, two is surely incorrect. And if the remaining two you have not even heard, Mindanao and Oromia, still if you know Catalonia is correct and Crimea is incorrect, you can easily answer this question. Means one is correct and two is incorrect. So, two is incorrect means A and D cannot be the option. And out of B and C, you have one is correct only in C. So, option C is the correct answer. So, 36 is C. Then next is, consider the following pairs. Town sometimes mentioned in news and country. Aleppo, Syria is correct. Kirkuk, Yemen. Mosul, Palestine. Mosul is not, surely not in Palestine. You know, it, we have not discussed it with Palestine. mazar sharif in Afghanistan has been in news. So, four is correct and one is correct. So, if you even know this, out of four, only two are correct. So, the B option is the correct option here. 37 is B. Then 38. What is terminal high altitude air defense? THAAD. THAAD has quite often been in news. This is anti-missile system which America is proposing to establish in Asia for Korea. So that it can protect South Korea from North Korea. So 38 again has quite often been in news. It is C. 39. Very recently, which of the following countries have lakhs of people either suffered from severe famine, acute malnutrition or died due to starvation caused by war, ethnic conflicts? So, here the countries are mentioned. You can see. So, the correct answer here is again Yemen and South Sudan. So, 39. The answer is 
D. Then next is the term two state solution is sometimes mentioned in the news in context of the affairs of Israel. Two state solution is regarding Israel and Palestine being established as two states and we have also quite often discussed this in news. Even in India, Israel relation two state solution is quite often mentioned. We adhere to this view. The next is ILO's convention 138 and 182 are related to. So, these are the conventions which recently India had adopted. You can see India ratified these four conventions on child labor. So, this had been in news in June. So, again, you can see correct answer here is A. 41 is A. The next is the Partnership for Action on Green Economy page. A UN mechanism to assist countries transition towards greener and more inclusive economies emerged at so various uh, you know, summits and con conferences are mentioned here. 2002, 12, 15 and 16. So, again, which of the specific uh, you know, uh, meet was where this page mechanism uh, was initiated. This is a difficult guess, so a wild guess actually. So, this is a difficult question according to me. The correct answer actually here is B. The UN Conference on Sustainable Development of 2012. The next is which is are the consequence consequences of a country becoming a member of NSG, nuclear suppliers group. So, if you be, India wants to become a member of NSG, this has been in news and the first statement says it will have access to latest and most efficient nuclear technologies. Of course, this is the consequence that we will get uh, access to. This is the purpose for which we want to be a member of NSG. And second statement says it automatically becomes a member of NPT. So, this has been discussed in news. India has not signed NPT and does not want to sign NPT and NSG has nothing to do with NPT is the viewpoint which India has endorsed. So, of course, India will not automatically become a member of NPT. We become a member of NSG because that is not something which we want. We don't want to become a member of this treaty because it is discriminatory. Uh, it categorizes countries as nuclear weapon states and non-nuclear weapon states. And India, though we have nuclear weapons, it is putting us under non-nuclear weapon states. So, we have our own concerns with NPT. So, here again, you can see only one statement. One is correct. So, 43, the answer would be A. The next is, rule of law index is released by which of the following? So, again, this is seems to be a factual question, but it's regarding rule of law. So, Amnesty International, we know it talks of corruption and does all such aspects. So, here again, Amnesty International may not be the correct answer. International Court of Justice is ICJ is the court. It will not be come up with indexes, indices. And then the Office of UN Commissioner for Human Rights. Again, we have not ever heard of this, but World Justice Project, this was in news as such too. And even an intelligent casework will help you to come to option D. So, this also is there in news. The next is, in the Indian context, what is the implication of ratifying the additional protocol with IAEA? So, we have signed, uh, ratified the additional protocol with IAEA. So, the civilian nu nuclear reactors come under IAEA safeguards. So, this is actually an old current affairs, old information regarding India's nuclear deal as such with US after which we have you know, come under IAEA purview too and we have segregated our civilian nuclear reactors. So, the, the option A is correct. The military nuclear installations do not come under the inspection of IAEA. And we have still not become a member of NSG. So, of course, this three option is also incorrect. And we have not become automatically, automatically members of NSG. So the correct answer for 45 is A. Then next is, consider the following countries. Australia, Canada, China, India, Japan and USA. Which of the above are among the free trade partners of Asia? So, this is regarding RCP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. RCP has quite often been in news. And this is regarding Asia and having this grouping with six countries with which uh, it has an FTA agreement. So, they are free trade partners. So, here again, if you are having this information, knowledge, you will easily be able to answer this question. And RCP has so often been in news that you cannot ignore this fact. So, this is a very simple question. Here, the correct answer is Australia, China, India and Japan. 1, 3, 4 and 5. That is option C. 46 is C. Then 47. 
India enacted the Geographical Indications of Goods Registration and Protection Act of 1999 in order to comply with the obligations to ILO, IMF, UNCTAD, WTO. So this is regarding GI, Geographical Indications. So this is regarding the trading in goods. So ILO is regarding labor. So it has nothing to do with labor. IMF is regarding IM, Inter International Monetary Fund, which is like a, you know, which provides loans as such too. So again, GI may not be having to, anything to do with it. UNCTAD is UN Conference on Trade and Development. So here, of course, Convention on Trade and Development is one aspect and WTO. It's the last one. So an intelligent guesswork, of course, will bring you to WTO because WTO is the entity. Even when you, we have discussed keywords on WTO, we have specifically mentioned uh, TRIPS, Trade Related Intellectual Property Rights, which comes under WTO. So it is WTO, which is the correct answer. Here. So here we have covered WTO regarding tariffs and trade and even trade uh, regarding TRIPS as such to trade related aspects of intellectual property rights. So, all these is regarding trips as such. Geographical indication also comes under that. It's an intellectual property. Then next is, now the current affairs aspect questions, that aspect is over. So, now the static part starts from question 48. First 47 questions are current affairs based. So, majority of them have been easy and could be intelligently guessed. So, a major part of this has been covered through our current affairs too. Now comes the static part, starting with culture on which there are seven questions. So, the first question in culture, of course, is difficult. This is regarding Tyagaraja. So, the first statement is, most of the Tyagaraja kritis are devotional songs in praise of Lord Krishna. So, they are actually devotional songs in praise of Lord Rama. So, Tyagaraja, Saint Tyagaraja was one of the three in the trinity of modern Carnatic music. So, you, if you have studied culture and regarding Carnatic music, you would know about this. He composed songs mostly in Telugu in praise of Lord Rama. So, first statement is incorrect. Of course, he composed ragas. So, the second statement created several new ragas is correct. Annamacharya and Tyagaraja are contemporary. So, you should know about Annamacharya too. Annamacharya was a Hindu saint. He is the first known composer in Carnatic music who composed songs in praise of God Venkateshwara, who is considered a form of Vishnu. So, here three statement is incorrect. They were not contemporaries and Annamacharya songs are in praise of Lord Venkateshwara. So, this is correct. So, if you have this much in-depth knowledge and information regarding Carnatic music, then you will be able to solve this culture question. Otherwise, personally, I have put it under difficult category. The correct answer is, of course, 2 and 4 being correct. That is option B. So, 48, the correct answer is B. Then next, 49th question. Here it is pairs. Consider the following pairs. Craft, heritage of. So, Puthukuli shawls, Tamil Nadu. Sujani embroidery, Maharashtra. Uppad jam, Jamdani saris, Karnataka. So, again, this is a difficult question. Knowing regarding these crafts and from which state they are is difficult. Here, actually, Sujani is an embroidery from Bihar. So, Sujani, Maharashtra is incorrect. Uppad Jamdani Saris. Jamdani is actually from Bengal and has been quite often been in news. But Uppad Jamdani Saris are from Uppad of East Godavari district of Andhra Pradesh. This is silk sari style. So they have also been given GI tag in 2009. So they were not something which were recently in news as such prominently. But yes, Jamdani has been quite often been in news. So Uppad Jamdani is from Andhra Pradesh, not Karnataka. So 3 is also incorrect. 2 is also incorrect. So, when 2 and 3 are incorrect, the only option remaining is A. So, 49, the correct answer is A. Then next is option 50 question. So, question number 50 in culture is the easy question according to me. So, out of 7 questions in culture from the static part, only this one question is easy category. Other 6 are difficult. So, there are many people who leave culture and it seems to be an intelligent decision at least with respect to these questions. But if you know static part, if you know the standard part of culture, like if you have done paintings, the well-known paintings, Bani Thani is a very famous painting which you will come across and if you have done culture with interest, only then it pays. If you just do culture from the static content from any notes, material, book, it will not help you. But if you actually look, like Bani Dhani is a famous painting, it's called Indian Mona Lisa. So, if you have actually taken interest in it and have studied it, then you will be able to solve this question. Bani Dhani, it is from Kishangar school of painting. So, it 
this was an easy question. Next, in Jainism, but then again, it is not something which you generally come across. So, you are again, this has been categorized as difficult question by me. Next is, with reference to the cultural history of India, consider the following statements. Number one, white marble was used in making Bulan Darwaza and Khanka Fatehpur Sikri. And second is, red sandstone and marble were used in making Bada Imam Bara and Rumi Darwaza in Lakhma. So, these you will know if you have specifically seen images of this place or have visited this place. Otherwise, this is not something which you will be able to solve if you study static current affairs just for the purpose, so static culture just for the purpose of the examination. So, here again, the correct answer here in Fatehpur Sikri 2, the details are given. So, yeah, marble is used here, but only for the uh, khanka, the shrine in Fatehpur Sikri, not for the Bulan Darwaza. So, and red sandstone for Badai Mambara and Rumi Darwaza, that is correct. So, here the correct option that is also red sandstone and marble, but marble was not used here. So, 52 the correct answer is actually D. So, this is the tomb of Sufi Saint Salim Chishti in Fatehpur Sikri. This is the Bulan Darwaza adjacent to it, and this is regarding the Rumi Darwaza in Lucknow and Badai Mambara. So here, there is no marble as such being used and not even red sandstone. So, this is not red sandstone as you can see from the images. Red stone, sandstone is rather used in Bulan Darwaza as such. So, here the 52, the correct answer is D. This is the red sandstone. Then next is 53. With reference to Indian history, who among the following is a future Buddha yet to come to save the world? So, this is actually Maitreya. Avalokiteshwar is quite often in news that is a bodhisattva. So, a bodhisattva embodies the compassion of all Buddhas. is called Avalokiteshwar. So, Maitreya is the correct answer. Then next is consider the following pairs. Tradition and state. So, this is Chapchar Kut festival, Khongyam Parva ballad and Thangta dance. So, Thangta dance is something which has quite often been, you know, in news it is from Manipur. So, at least three is incorrect, you should know. So, then again, you would be stuck with A and B, one only or one and two only. So, this is actually a difficult question. And here, the correct answer actually is B. One and two, both are correct. The next is the medieval question. There is one question from history medieval, which is, which one of the following foreign travelers elaborately discussed about diamonds and diamond mines of India? The correct answer is Jim Baptist Tavernia. But if you have done medieval with such interest, you may be able to solve this question. So, so here you can see Jean Baptist Tavernia, French gem merchant in the court of Mughal, visited the court of Mughal Emperor Shaja. So he is best known for his purchase or discovery of this Tavernia blue diamond. So it's known as the home diamond, hope diamond as such, presently in London. So, of course, this is a difficult question. Then from history modern, there were 13 questions. Out of these 13 questions, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are difficult questions. And 6, six questions are, 7 questions are difficult. So out of 13 questions, 7 are difficult. So even history modern was difficult. So remaining few are easy. Some could have been guessed. So, first question here is, which of the following led to introduction of English education in India? So, of course, we do know English education was introduced through various charter acts. But here again, the charter act of 1813 specifically, yes, General Committee of Public Instructions 1823 does not come up quite often in history modern, which you read through Spectrum or through Vipin Chandra. So, this is a difficult question. Orientalist and Anglicist controversy, of course, you should be knowing about. The correct answer here is actually D. So, 56 is D. Then next is, in 1920, which of the following changed its name to Swarajya Sabha? Again, this is something which is not in standard history modern textbooks which are recommended. Here the correct answer is All India Home Rule League. So, again, this is a difficult question. Next is, which among the following events happened earlier? So, this is actually chronological. So, A, B, C, D, four options are given. I have provided the years here and according to the years, you can see the earliest is Deen Bandhu Mitra writing Neil Darpan. 
So again, this is of course a difficult question. So they are not very far apart too during the same period, 1860-63. So it's difficult to do guesswork here too. So this is a difficult question again. Next is, with reference to the educational institutions during colonial rule in India, consider the following facts. Institution and their founder. So Calcutta Madrasa, Warren Hastings. So here again, 59, you should know. Calcutta Madrasa was actually founded by Warren Hastings. So that is correct. But Sanskrit College at Banaras was not by William Jones. So it, has, it had been sanctioned by then Governor General Lord Cornwallis. William Jones was one of the founders of Asiatic Society of Bengal. So one is incorrect, two is correct. Even with this much information, that two is surely correct and one is surely incorrect. With this information, you come with what is left with you is either it is it is only B. So option B is what is remaining. So Calcutta Madrasa Warren Hastings is truly correct. So B is the correct answer. Three, Fort William College was founded by Lord Wellesley. But then Arthur Wellesley is not the correct answer because Arthur Wellesley was the brother of Lord Wellesley. So he was the younger brother. So again, this is quite confusing. That's why I have put it under category of difficult. Next is regarding Woods Dispatch, which of the following statements are true? Grants in aid system was introduced. Yes, it was. Establishment of universities was recommended. Yes, it was recommended. English as a medium of instruction was announced, but then English as a medium of instruction only at higher levels, at primary levels, at lower levels. It was vernacular language which was recommended. So, here the correct answer is 1 and 2 only, that is A. So, this which dispatch is covered in detail in various notes and books which you study. So, this is an easy question. The next is, after the Santhal uprising subsided, what was were the measures taken by the colonial government? So, a Santhal uprising took place just before the revolt of 1857 and this actually, though the Britishers were able to suppress it, but the Santhals had surprised or you know, shocked the British, Britishers as such. So, of course, they were given concessions and here that is what is provided. The territory called Santhal Parganas was created, were created and even it became illegal for a Santhal to transfer land to a non-Santhal. So, both these options are correct. Then next is, Economically, one of the results of the British rule in India in the 19th century was, so economically, how did it affect India? So, first is increase in the export of Indian handicrafts. We know that Indian handicrafts in export did not increase, rather our handicraft industry was uh, completely, uh, completely ended, it completely ended. Second is growth in the number of Indian-owned factories. Of course, this did not take place. Indian-owned factories did not increase. Rapid increase in urban population. No, even this was not the case. So, commercialization of Indian agriculture, of course, is true because they were emphasizing on Indian agricultural raw materials being produced so that finished goods can be brought from, you know, raw material procured and finished goods brought from Britain and dumped into the country, you know, pocketed in the country. So, C is the correct answer here. This is a very easy question. Next is, he wrote biographies of Mazzini, Garibaldi, Shivaji and Shri Krishna, stayed in America for some time and was also elected to the Central Assembly. He was, again, if you are having this much knowledge, information, great, but for me, I put it under difficult category. The answer is Lala Lajpat Rai. C. Then next is, in the federation established by the Government of India Act 1935, residuary powers were given to, so Government of India Act 1935 is very important act. It is one of the major sources for the constitution of India too. So, residuary powers here were given to the Governor General. So, this is also an easy question. Answer is B. Then next is, the staple commodities of export by English East India Company from Bengal in the middle of the 18th century were, so, there are, again, this seems to be a very question based on factual information. But that again, an intelligent guesswork can be made here because from Bengal, what would be, you know, uh, exported? So, of course, cotton would be exported. So, raw cotton is there. O opium was also being exported from many places. So, that may also be the case. But gold silver was not exported. Rather, Britishers, East India Company used to buy goods and 
give gold silver in lieu of that so c will not be the case sugar and salt does not seem to be commodities which need to be exported from india till europe so of course b is not correct so the correct answer here actually is 65 d so from these two you have to select one so of course cotton silk was exported from britain from bengal to britain so d is the correct answer then next is which one of the following is very significant aspect of champaran satyagraha so champaran satyagraha is part of uh, is a very important part of modern indian history so first it says active all india participation of lawyers students and women in the national movement so champaran satyagraha should know it was not the national movement the first national movement was the non cooperation movement but champaran satyagraha was in bihar here the initial experiments which uh, mahatma gandhi did initial satyagrahs which mahatma gandhi had in india so champaran satyagraha will not result in this one is not correct a is not correct active involvement of dalits and tribal communities in india in the national movement no. joining of peasant and rest to india's national movement and drastic decrease in cultivation of plantation crops and commercial crops so very significant aspect is not regarding drastic decrease but joining of peasants because after champaran satyagraha which was a satyagraha in rural india so the national movement which had an urban orientation to it got peasants joining into it so joining of peasants and rest to india's national movement is a significant aspect so 66 the correct answer is c then next is which of the following statements does not apply to the system of subsidiary alliance introduced by lord wellesley so subsidiary alliance is also very important uh, topic in modern indian history it was introduced by lord wellesley everybody knows about it but then the problem here is the difficulty in this question is because it is one of the aspects do not apply so it maintained a large standing army at others expense of course this was true it was to keep india safe from napoleonic danger again whether it was true or not can't be said to secure a fixed income for the company again it did not talk directly about any income and to establish british paramountcy over indian states is correct so a and d are surely correct so no incorrect statement can be either b or c so it was actually to keep india safe from napoleonic danger so if you are aware of this information you will surely say b is correct and you will tick c otherwise it will be a 50 50 scenario and you may go wrong so for me i have put it under difficult category for that purpose because uh, this knowledge about subsidiary alliance been introduced for keeping india safe from napoleonic danger is not covered in standard materials so this is there so it was actually subsidiary alliance was introduced by french and then lord wellesley also took up that idea and used it then next is who among the following were founders of hind mazdoor sabha established in 1948 post independence So again, this is a very difficult question. I have no clue about it. The correct answer for sixty-eight is also D. So this is a very factual question. Then next is geography. Five questions. Out of these five questions, there are only two difficult questions, and remaining three at least can be guessed and are easy. So first one was regarding artificial lake. So an intelligent guess work can help you here too. because kodai canal as it says it's a canal so kodai canal is the correct answer here is an artificial lake then next is regarding agricultural soils so again if you have done geography static portion of soils you will easily be able to solve this question it's a very easy question high content of organic matter in soil drastically reduces its water holding capacity rather it is reverse it increases so one statement is incorrect second statement soil does not play any role in the sulfur cycle of course this is again incorrect so one is incorrect two is incorrect so correct answer is three only irrigation over a period of time can contribute to salinization of some agricultural lands it's also something which is surely you will be knowing about it so the correct answer for 70 is b then next is consider the following statements the barren island volcano is an active volcano located in the indian territory this is an information which we know the last time the barren island volcano erupted again this is incorrect because vol barren island volcano had erupted in 2017 as such. so this was in news so 1 and 3 are correct 
is surely known, but two is incorrect. So if you know this much, then again an intelligent guesswork can help you in giving the answer for 71 as B. So three is incorrect. So of course the correct answer is A, one only. So three is surely incorrect means B, C and D are incorrect. So one A is what is left because Barren Island is also not in the Nicobar group, but under one group of islands. So no, the correct answer is A. Then next is consider the following statements. The Earth's magnetic field has reversed every few hundred thousand years. Yes. When the Earth was created more than 4,000 million years ago, there was 54% oxygen and no carbon dioxide. Now again, there was not so much of oxygen on Earth. Rather, it was carbon dioxide which dominated. So for 72 here again, the statement given, two statement is incorrect. When living organisms originated, they modified the early atmosphere of the Earth. That is, of course, true. So, 1 and 3 are correct. The correct answer for 72 is here 1 and C. Here this is incorrectly. This is option C. B is here. So, C is the correct answer. The next is, which of the following have shrunk immensely or dried up in the recent past due to human activities? So, Aral C has quite often been in use. So, one is surely the one C which has, you know, drastically reduced and shrunk. It's said to be one of the planet's worst environmental disasters. Lake Baikal has also quite often been in use for the same purpose. So, here the correct answer is either one or even one and C. Not sure. So, it comes under a difficult section because it has shrunk immensely, it has shrunk, but it's not shrunk immensely or dried up, just like Aral Sea. So, Aral Sea and Lake Baikal cannot be compared. Aral Sea has seen the worst form of shrinking and drying up. The next is, among the following cities, which one lies on the longitude closest to that of Delhi? Again, a very difficult question. Here the answer is A, but then for that you should be having the map in mind, the longitudes as such. So, on the same longitude as New Delhi lies Bengaluru, down here. So, for 74, it's a difficult question. The correct answer is A. Then comes the agriculture section. In agriculture, there are three questions. Out of these three, two are difficult. One is easy. So, the static part of agriculture is what is we are discussing right now. Agriculture based on current affairs, we have already discussed. So, this is regarding conservation agriculture. So, conservation agriculture has specific definition and there are three specific principles under it. No tillage, permanent soil organic cover and species diversification. So, here out of these five, this guessing it is a little difficult. Avoiding monoculture practices as such is also an option here. So, correct answer here is C, 2, 4 and Because 1 may also be correct, but 1, 2, 4 and 5 is not an option. Then next is, with reference to organic farming in India, consider the following statements. The national program of or for organic production is operated under the guidelines of Ministry of Rural Development. So, national program for organic production as such comes under the, under the Ministry of Commerce. So, this is again what you should know, NPOP. So, this has been in news. So, we have also discussed it as late as in January 2018 too. Even APEDA has been in news, Agriculture and Processed Foods Products Export Development Authority. So, it, it functions as the Secretariat for Implementation of NPOP. So, that is also correct. And Sikkim became the first fully organic state of the country that had also been in news. So, the correct answer here is B, 2 and 3 only because it is not under Ministry of Rural Development but under Ministry of Commerce. And again you would say that this is not under Ministry of Rural Development, you may think it is regarding even Ministry of Agriculture but it comes under Ministry of Commerce. So, then next is, as per the NSSO 70th round situation assessment survey of, of agricultural households, consider the following three statements. Now, these are very factual statements. If you have so much of knowledge information, great. Otherwise, for me, I put it under difficult category. The correct answer for 77 is C. That is 1 and 3 only. 2 is incorrect. 
Then 78, there are 8 questions on polity now. So out of the 8 questions in polity, all of them are either easy or can be intelligently guessed. So polity section was quite manageable. Here the first question you can see in polity, question number 78. If the President of India exercises his power as provided under Article 356 of the Constitution, which is regarding President's rule, in respect of a particular state, then A, B, C, D. The assembly of the state is automatically dissolved. It is not automatically dissolved. That is incorrect. Then the powers of the legislature of that state shall be exercisable by or under the authority of the parliament. That is correct. Article 19 is suspended in that state. So it is also not, not necessarily be suspended. And the president can make laws relating to that state. The president himself does not make laws, but under the authority as such. So the statement B is correct. So 78, the answer is B. 79 again is a little intelligent guesswork required because out of the three options regarding leader of the opposition which was very much in use, the first one requires intelligent guesswork. So we may categorize this under current affairs policy too. The first statement says in the first Lok Sabha, the single largest party in the opposition was the Swatantra party. The Swatantra party was of the capitalists. So basically Swatantra party was not so much powerful. CPI was the single largest party in the opposition then in the first Lok Sabha. So option one is incorrect. Then the second says in the Lok Sabha, the leader of the opposition was recognized for the first time in 1969. This is true. If you have been doing current affairs too, you would come across this. But the minimum uh, seats required, minimum number of members required for a party to be so, having a leader of the opposition as such in the Lok Sabha is minimum 10 percent. That is 55 members. So party needs minimum 10 percent. That is 55 members, not 75 members. So your option C, 3 is incorrect. So the correct answer is B because 1 and 3 are incorrect. Then next is consider the following statements. The Parliament of India can place a particular law in the ninth schedule of the constitution. So ninth schedule quite often remains in use and you should know about it. It's very important part of polity. So this one statement of course is true. That is what the purpose of ninth schedule is. Whatever is in the ninth schedule is excluded from judicial review. But then the Supreme Court had recently ruled that what is put or not put in ninth schedule can be reviewed. Once put in ninth schedule is ex is immune from judicial review, but still the immunity can be decided on after the Supreme Court rules if a question comes before it. So validity of a law placed in the ninth schedule cannot be examined by any court and no judgment can be made on it is no longer true. So after the recent ruling. So 80th, the correct answer is A. So recent is few years back, not like a present year's current affairs. Then next is consider the following statements. Number one. The first statement, the Speaker of the Legislative Assembly shall vacate his or her office if he she ceases to be a member of the Assembly. Of course, you have no, if you are no longer a member of the Assembly, you cannot be a Speaker. So, statement 1 is correct. But whenever the Legislative Assembly is dissolved, the Speaker vacates his or her office immediately. This is not true because this is a very important static part of uh, current uh, of polity as such that the Speaker continues to stay in office even after the Legislative Assembly is dissolved because it is the presiding, the officer of the Lok Sabha at the central level and legislative assembly at the state level. So the speaker continues to stay in office even after legislative assembly is dissolved. Only when the fresh legislative assembly comes forth after elections and the speaker pro tem is appointed. So the speaker of course then vacates his her office. So second statement is incorrect. He does not vacate immediately. So answer here for 81 is A. Then next is Consider the following statements. One, no criminal proceedings shall be instituted against the governor of a state in any court during his term of office. This is correct. No criminal proceedings can no criminal proceedings can be initiated. Second is the emoluments and allowances of the governor of a state shall not be diminished during his term of office. So these are specific uh, immunities which are provided to governor even to the president. So these both these statements are correct. 82 the answer is C. Next is, which one of the following reflects the most appropriate relationship between law and liberty? So, this is an intelligent guesswork. Actually, this is based on this statement by John Locke, where there is no law, there is no liberty. So, if there are more laws, there is less liberty is the first statement. So, if more laws means your liberty is being reduced, that is not the correct interpretation. So, that is incorrect. 
laws are also required laws does not mean liberty is lost if there are no laws there is no liberty is the statement if there is liberty laws have to be made by the people so laws are not made directly by the people so that is not a statement making sense then if laws are changed too often liberty is in danger so again if laws need to be modified so the correct answer here basically is b so some guesswork can help you in coming to this answer then next is which of the following are regarded as the main features of the rule of law so rule of law this is a very easy question this is quite often an important you know feature as such which is there in polity as such to rule of law the terminology so it is limitation of powers of course yes there is equality of before law required under it yes and liberty and civil rights are upheld that is also true but people's responsibility to the government so there is no responsibility aspect under rule of law so three statement third option will not come so here number three statement should not be there so the correct answer is c 84 is c then next is with reference to the parliament of india which of the following parliamentary committees scrutinize and report to the house whether the powers to make regulation rules sub rules bylaws etc conferred by the constitution or delegated by the parliament are being properly exercised by the executive within the scope of such delegation this is a very easy question is the committee on subordinate legislation so you should know about subordinate legislation is an important part of polity and governance so 85 the answer is b then next is the economy section there are seven questions in economy out of these many are analytical so they are intelligent guesswork so 86 87 88 89 90 are intelligent guesswork including 91 only one difficult question is there because again this is regarding chronology events in economy so this is one difficult question otherwise by intelligent guesswork you can attempt all economic questions the static part So first question is which of the following statements correctly describes the meaning of legal tender money so this has been very much in use with respect to cryptocurrency too so the money legal tender money is the money which government issues as such so the money which is tendered in courts of law to defer the fee of legal cases so because the term legal comes this day, this option has been framed as such which is incorrect the money which a creditor is under compulsion to accept in settlement of his claims so if you have taken money from someone a loan from someone the creditor will have to receive take back this legal tender money in return of that loan so that is there bank money in the form of checks drafts bills of exchange so this is not bank money the legal tender money is actually the currency so it's not the bank money metallic money in circulation in a currency so legal tender money is not just the metallic money but also the currency notes so the correct answer here is b 86 is b then 87 if a commodity is provided free to public by the government then so if commodity is provided free opportunity cost is zero ignored transferred from the consumers of the product to tax paying public or transferred from the consumers of the product to the government so government actually eventually is going to go into uh, will be taken care of through the tax paying money, public money so this option c is the correct opportunity cost is transferred here because government is providing it for free and government does not spend money from its own pocket in the sense the ministers and members they don't spend their own money it's the taxation money which is spent so c is the correct answer here it is correct then next is increase in absolute and per capita real gnp do not connote a higher level of economic development if so if per capita real gnp is in, increased absolute and per capita real gnp it will not result in higher level of economic development if industrial output fails to keep pace with agricultural output that does not make sense agricultural output fails to keep pace with industrial output again does not make sense poverty and unemployment increase means gnp per capita is increasing so per capita is overall gnp divided by the population so but then if poverty and unemployment is also increasing means wealth has been concentrated in the hands of few so that is not good for the country so poverty and unemployment increases it does not result in higher economic development imports grow faster than exports also does not fit in this aspect so c 88 c is the correct answer 
Then next is consider the following statements. Human capital formation is better explained in terms of a process which enables. So, what is human capital formation? Individuals of a country to accumulate more capital. Capital basically means capital money. So, human capital is nothing to do with actual capital money. Increasing the knowledge, skill level and capacities of the people of the country. Of course, is correct. Accumulation of tangible wealth. Tangible is what can be seen, felt like money, etc. Property, etc. Accumulation of intangible wealth. Intangible wealth is which cannot be seen as such. Cannot be touched, seen. So, like the skills, knowledge, etc. So, accumulation of intangible wealth is what will come to. So, 89, the correct answer is C. Then 90. Despite being a high saving economy, capital formation may not result in significant increase in output due to means we are high, a country is a high saving economy, savings are high, capital formation is taking place means money is being, you know, capital is accumulating, but then it will not result in significant increase if, if weak administrative machinery is option A, illiteracy, high population density or high capital output rate. <coughs> So basically, if you have huge saving, capital is high, but then if capital output ratio means how much amount of capital is required to get a particular output, if that is very high, then it will not result in significant increase in output. So 90, the correct answer is D. Then this is chronology. So of course, it is difficult. Goa 4 will be last. So Goa became a part of independent India was in the end. So, here you can see the years are very close, 53, 55, Air India nationalized and when SBI, the rename of Imperial Bank to SBI was done. So, that's why it comes under the difficult category. The correct answer is B, option B, 3, 2, 1, 4. The next is, consider the following statements. The quantity of imported edible oil is more than the domestic production of edible oils in the last five years. And second is the government does not impose any custom duty on all the imported edible oils as a special case. So, of course, custom duty is imposed. So, this is incorrect. So statement 2 is incorrect. And of course, imported edible oil has increased. So, uh, actually, uh, the first statement is correct. So, for 92, the correct answer is A. Then comes biodiversity questions. These There are four questions out of which one is difficult. Other three are quite easy. The first one is actually a factual question. Pakhoi Wildlife Sanctuary, where is it located? The correct answer is Arunachal Pradesh, but then this either you may know about it or it will come under difficult category at least according to my analysis. Then next is, consider the following statements. The definition of critical wildlife habitat is incorporated in Forest Rights Act 2006. So, Forest Rights Act is quite often in use. So, this is true. For the first time in India, baigas have been given habitat rights. So, of course, this is also true, but you may or may not remember or recollect this. But then third statement says, Union Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change officially decides and declares habitat rights for PVTCs, primitive and vulnerable tribal groups in any part of India. So, this is actually done by Gram Sabhas. So, three statement is incorrect. So, one is correct and three is incorrect. So, with three, there are three options. So, only option remaining is A. So, 94, the correct answer is A. Then, 95 is very easy. Consider the following. Birds, dust blowing, rain, wind blowing. Which of the above spread plant diseases? It is D. Then, 96 again. Which of the following leaf modifications occur in desert areas to inhibit water loss? Hard and waxy leaves, tiny leaves, thorns instead of leaves. This is something which is done even at school level. So, there the answer again is D. It's a very easy question. Then next is environment climate change question. There are three questions out of which one is quite difficult because again it's a very factual question. The first one is momentum for change climate neutral now is an initiative launched by. So it's regarding climate change. So this is an intelligent guesswork which can be done. IPCC, IGPCC is actually not taking up initiatives as such, it is more into research. So, that may not be a correct option. It is a guesswork which you can do. UNEP is United Nations Environment Program. Again, related to environment, 
then world meteorological organization regarding weather forecasting so this climate neutral now may not be an initiative of this so a and d are surely out and unfcc is one which is quite often in news regarding you know the convention as such to in united nations framework convention on climate change and cop is been held to so here 97 actually the correct answer is c it was an initiative in 2015 an intelligent guess work may help you putting the correct uh, ticking the correct answer here 98 is difficult it's regarding gaxa global alliance for climate smart agriculture so this was also launched in 2014 so this is very old like, environment related current affairs so again this comes under difficult category 98 the correct answer is b so that is only second statement is correct it's not uh, outcome of 2015 summit of 2014 summit actually and india was not instrumental in gaxa creation then the 99th question is which of the following statements best describes carbon fertilization a increased plant growth due to increased concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere b says increased temperature of earth due to increased concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere so of course b this happens but that has nothing to do with fertilization so b is not the correct uh, statement describing increased acidity of oceans due to increased concentration of carbon dioxide this also occurs but has nothing to do with carbon fertilization d is adaptation of all living beings to all climate change brought about by increased concentration of carbon dioxide now adaptation to all climate change again is quite difficult and this is not about carbon fertilization is about it's about increased plant growth due to increased concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere so an intelligent guess work can also help you pick 99 option as correct option as a and the last question is in which of the following areas can gps technology be used mobile phone operations of course it is used banking operations yes controlling the power grids too so here the correct answer is d so the analysis basically gives us the idea that current affairs is very important not just for mains for interview but also for prelims and current affairs becomes the crux of your entire preparation so please prepare well and best of luck for all those who are preparing for mains and also for those who have started preparation and going to prepare for prelims 2019 this is very important that you analyze the question paper so that you can prepare well for your examination thank you so much